Hello and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at the circled slider, one of the widgets from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium Collection. With this widget, you can create a unique image display. The circled slider allows you to upload visuals with a circular shape, and it then adds all kinds of style and placement possibilities. For example, you get this animated effect where the border of the currently displayed image acts as a countdown, indicating how long that image will remain prominently displayed before it's replaced by the next one. Moreover, each image can be accompanied by text and even a button for easier product placement, service promotion, portfolio introduction or anything you can think of. And besides the content, which is completely customizable, the Circled Slider widget is equipped with an author date option, animation effects, and numerous style options. So let's see how to use all those options. Head over to the back end. In the Elementor sidebar, search for Circled Slider. There it is. Drag it over to the right. Okay, this is what the widget looks like by default. There is one item, or image with text, in the slider. The image is shown as rectangular because we haven't set the frame yet. But all the content here serves to act as a placeholder. We'll be customizing and styling the slider as we go through the options, so this look will change completely by the end. Now, when we start working on the widget, we should begin from the content tab. The topmost section here contains some general options. So there's the option to set the top bottom padding. By increasing the value here, we can increase the amount of space over and under the slider items. And you can make the adjustment using the slider or this input field. I'll set 170 pixels here. Alright, under this we have the child elements, or items. One item equals one image in the slider. Using the item options, I'm going to replace the dummy image first. I'll use this one from my media library. Note its circular shape. Insert media. Alright, here we are. We can see my chosen image in focus as well as here queued up. This will make more sense once I add more items. Back in the options, we have the background color. If you set something here, it will affect the whole slider display. But if you prefer, you can set a different color as the background for each item or slide. Okay, after that, we have the title field. This is where we can replace the text shown here on the page. I'm going to set something new. Just a sec. Okay, here's the new text now. Then we have the highlight word option. With it, we can select a word in the title that will be shown in a different style, namely italic. We just have to set the order number of the word we want. I'll put, for example, two. And then my second word will be accentuated by the change of style. Okay, then we have the button text. It's another input field where we can replace this text within the button, provided you plan to use a button, which I don't. To remove the button, simply erase the hashtag acting as a placeholder link, and then it's gone. On the other hand, if you decide to keep the button and need help modifying it, we have a separate video covering the key button options, and you can check that out. Alright, those were all the options we have for the individual item or slide. I'm going to create additional slides now by clicking on Add Item. Since we've seen the options for this, I'll skip ahead with the video while I make a couple more slides. Okay, here we are. I have four slides or items in total. This is what they look like before I do any styling or spatial adjustments, which I plan to do in a bit. For now, the next section of the options concerns the button. There are options here and for the button icon as well, but as I deleted my button, they don't mean much to me. After those two though, we have the developer tools section. It contains an option that you get with all of our widgets. If you switch it to yes, then it will display the widget in the form of a WordPress shortcode, the light gray text you see on the page, which you can easily copy for use elsewhere on your site. Alright, I'll switch this back. And under that, we have the help section. It contains links to various helpful resources, in case you need them. And that's all for the content tab. Let's take a look at the style tab now. The first section here is for the main image style. The main image is the image that is in focus, and we can adjust its position and its width. I'll show you the width first. If I try to change it, the slider needs a second to show the difference. There! 
Now the main image is smaller because I reduced its width. For the setting here, I'm going to use percentages. So I'll erase this and then switch from pixels to percentages. And put 27% for the image width. Okay, this is it. And the other option here, horizontal position, lets us move the main image sideways. A negative value moves it to the left, while a positive one would move it to the right. Again, I'll use percentages. So let me clear this. Then switch to percentages. And finally set minus 5% for the value. This puts the image off center just a bit. Okay. The next section concerns the title style, or this text here. Firstly, there is the title tag, which you can use to change the HTML tag for your title. You can pick any of the settings from the drop-down. Then there is the title color. It has this user-friendly color picker, so it's extremely easy to change the color to whatever you like. I'm going to set a bright red shade using the hex code input field. That's it. Following that, we have the title typography settings. They include things like the font family for the title. You have a large selection to choose from. Then there's the font size, which I plan to change. I'll put 100 pixels here. Next, the font weight has numerous settings you can choose from. I'm going to use 600 semi-bold for my design. Alright. After that, there is the option to transform the title text to uppercase, lowercase, capitalize it, or leave it normal. Next, the style option will let us turn the title italic or oblique, if we don't want to keep it normal, which is the default. Then there's the decoration option, where you can add a line under, over, or through the title, if that's something you're interested in. Under that, we have the line height option, and I want to change this to reduce the space. To do that, I'll switch from ends to pixels and set 90 for the value. Now my title text is a bit more compact. Ok, next we have the letter spacing option. I'll adjust it to bring the letters a bit closer together. I'll set minus 7.5 pixels to help me do that. There we go. Finally, there's the word spacing option if we want to bring the words closer together or further away. I don't think I need this, so I'll close the typography options. Alright, that also brings us to the next section, content style. Here we have the option to move the title text away from the left. By moving the slider, you can see how the title moves. I have a specific value in mind and it's easier to type it in than manipulate the slider. So I'll set 75 pixels here. Ok, next there's the content width, for adjusting how much the title can stretch. The smaller the value you set, the smaller the space for the title. For this, I'm going to use percentages. So clear this, switch the unit of measure to percentages, and set 50 for the value. Ok, this allows the words to stay in a single piece rather than being broken up like earlier. At least for the titles I have. After that, there's the button margin top option for setting the amount of space between the button and the title. Since I removed the button from my slides, the option won't do much for me. So, let's move on. With the bullet style section, we'll be working on the smaller preview images on the right side of the slider. Firstly, we can move them away from the right by changing the offset. You can see how they've shifted. I don't want to move them too much, so I'll set 25 pixels for the value. Next, the bullet borders option reduces the space between the small images and even squishes them a bit. You can see the effects of the change quite clearly. I want to keep the images looking rounded, so I'll put 98 pixels for this. After that, we have the bullet border color option. We can use it to change the color of the border framing the images. I don't plan to use this. Rather, I'm going to opt for the next option, the bullet border active color. And this is actually how I'm going to create that line that circles the image to indicate how long it's going to stay in focus. Let me show you. If I set the color, here it is, it's animated by default, you don't have to do anything further. I'm going to set a soft grey shade for mine. I want it visible but not overwhelming. Perfect. Following that, the bullet image size option, as its name indicates, lets us change the size of the images. For my design, I'll set 83 pixels as the size. Ok. And to go with that, we have the space between bullets for setting how much space we'll have between the images. You can set a pretty large gap if you like. It all depends on what kind of design you have in mind. 
For the one I'm making, I'll set 25 pixels here. And this is the look I wanted, meaning my circled slider is done. All the remaining section of the options are dedicated to styling the button, which I don't have, so they don't affect me. However, as I mentioned, if you kept the button and need help with any of its options, you can check out our video on the key button, which I've linked below. Having said that, I'll hit update to save my work. Now I have a great image-heavy element that is ready to be used on my slide. And as you've seen, it's been the work of moments to create it. The circled slider widget is bundled with options and settings that made our work easier. And if you look back on the page we started from, you'll probably notice that now, with your new knowledge, recreating any of the examples shown here will be a piece of cake. So hopefully this video has answered any questions you may have had and inspired you to give this widget a try. In case there's something we haven't covered that you'd like explained, or if you have a comment or suggestion you'd like to make, please drop us a line in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe and be the first to learn about any new tutorials on our channel. Thank you for watching.